Well, good morning. Um, as I mentioned last week, we're going to start a, a new sermon series through the, uh, the book of Habakkuk. The, the title of, of the series, as you'll notice there on, on, your, on your bulletin, is When We Don't Understand. And, and, and I think that, um, you know, this is, this, is going to be, this is going to be one of those sermon series that I, I believe is going to touch each and every one of us. But it's going to touch each and every one of us in an area that we don't always either acknowledge or we don't always share. Because, you know what, we, we don't like to show weaknesses as people. We don't like to show any kind of chinks in our armor. We want, you know, we, we love to come to church and we put on our, our, our church face. You know what our church face is? Our church face is, hey, I got it all together. My, my, you know, my week has been great. And um, you know what, I, I never fail. I never mess up. And, and that's, kind of, that's kind of the front we put up. But behind that, what we find is there, there are things that happen in our lives that we don't understand why they're happening. There, there are things that, that happen to us. There, there are things that God allows to happen in our lives and we don't understand. We don't understand what God is doing. We don't understand why God is allowing it to happen. But we don't always express that. Because we like to put on that brave face and, you know, just, well, I just, I just got to trust God. And yeah, we, we do have to, to trust God. But I, I think it's, it's healthy for us to work that out and, and to exercise that and to say, hey, you know what? There are things that happen in my life I don't understand. There are things that God allows to happen in my life that I don't like. There are things that, that happen that I wrestle with God. I'm saying that as your pastor. So when you go through that in your life, we have to know and recognize we're, we're not alone. There, there are all times, we all have times in those lives when we don't understand. That's where we come to Habakkuk chapter 1. Beginning in verse 1, title of the message is, When God Seems Inactive. Stand with me as we honor the reading of the Word of God here this morning. Habakkuk chapter 1, beginning in verse 1. The perfect and errant Word of God says this. The oracle which Habakkuk the prophet saw. How long, O Lord, will I call for help and you will not hear? I cry out to you violence, yet you do not save. Why do you make me see iniquity and cause me to look on wickedness? Yes, destruction and violence are before me. Strife exists and contentions arises. Therefore, the law is ignored and justice is never upheld. For the wicked surround the righteous. Therefore, justice comes out perverted. Look among the nations. Observe. Be astonished. Wonder. Because I am doing something in your days that you would not believe if, I, if you were told. For behold, I am raising up the Chaldeans, the fierce and impetuous people who march throughout the earth to seize dwelling places which are not theirs. They are dreaded and feared. Their justice and authority originate within themselves. Their horses are swifter than leopards and keener than wolves in the evening. Their horsemen come galloping. Their horsemen come from afar. They fly like an eagle, swooping down to devour. All of them come for violence. Their horde of faces move forward. They collect captives like sand. They mock at kings and rulers are laughing matters to them. They laugh at every fortress and heap up rubble to capture it. Then they will sweep through like the wind and pass on. But they will be held guilty. They whose strength is their God. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray that uh, as we begin our journey through the prophet Habakkuk, we begin to look at those times when we, we don't understand. Specifically morning, this morning, Lord, as we tackle the subject when, when God seems inactive. Lord, we, we admit that we all go through those times when we're wondering what, what God is doing. You seem to be silent. 
you seem to be not moving in our lives. And we, like the prophet, we cry out to you. Lord, I, I pray that, that we move past those questions. We realize the answer is that God is always active. God is always at work, even when we don't see, even when we don't understand. Lord, help us to rest in that unchanging place this morning. Lord, you are not afraid of our questions. But the only question for us is, will we accept your answer? Even if it's not the answer that we want to hear. Lord, I pray that the truth of your word this morning, Lord, I pray that it would move us. It would move us to a place beyond just questioning, to a place of acceptance, to a place of obedience, to a place where we trust you, Lord, even when we don't know even when we can't see, even when we are incapable of understanding what you are doing. Lord, help us to know and trust that you are doing something. And that something is for our good. Lord, I thank you that you are a loving and active God. Lord, I thank you that we are able to, to bring our questions to you. Lord, I thank you that if we are patient, we will hear from you. Lord, use this time. Speak to your people. Draw us closer to yourself. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Habakkuk is a, is a unique prophet. What, what we find in, in most other prophetic books is there's usually the, the prophet is a, is a mediator between God and the people. The, the people would, would be sinning against God. They would be breaking the covenant that God laid out before them in, in the books of the law. And the role of the prophet would be that he would receive the word of God and then he would go and deliver that to the people. He was often called the, the covenant persecutor, uh, in other words, or prosecutor, if you will, that, that God would sell, tell the prophet, okay, this is, this is how the people should be living. This is how they are living. Now, this is what they need to do in order to come back into that covenant relationship with God. And these are the consequences if they don't do what I am asking them to do. And that's kind of the, the basic outline of all the other prophetic books, basically. Um, we, we could say Jonah is a little different, but Habakkuk is totally different. Instead of delivering God's message of repentance and judgment to his people... Habakkuk actually questions God's activity, or at least from what he could tell. He felt like God should be doing more than what he was doing. You know, I think we can all relate to that. When we are, when we are going through something in our lives, that there, there's, I mean, I can think of times in my life when it's just like, God, you should be doing more. And I, I just could not see it. I couldn't picture, couldn't understand, you know, why these things were happening or, or why God wasn't answering prayers sooner. Or God wasn't making doors open more quickly. I, I remember probably um, the one that sticks out in my mind is a time that um, I had served a, a year internship at, at Forestville Baptist Church. And at the end of that year, um, they said, well, you know, there's... You've done everything that we need you to, to do. And I, you know, I didn't want to be an intern the rest of my life. I, I wanted to, to pastor a church. And, and my thinking, when that internship ended, God should have already opened a door for me to pastor a church already. And in my mind, that's, that's what it was thinking. But yet, that wasn't reality. And weeks began to go by. And then a couple months began to go by. 
And I had that conversation with God. God, what's going on here? You know what? I, I, I walked away from a, a, a successful construction company to, to follow you and to serve you. I, I, I'm doing what you asked me to do, and yet here I am. There, there's nothing happening. I didn't understand. To me, God was inactive. But he wasn't. Um, obviously, we know that, uh, you know, look back and see that, that the timing that God brought me here was his perfect timing. If it, it had been a couple months sooner, it probably wasn't the right time. And God was at work and God was preparing me. God was preparing the people here and, and bringing that in his perfect time. But we all go through that. And that's what Habakkuk goes through. We're going to answer three questions here this morning. The first question is maybe a question that we've, we've asked ourselves before. Is God listening? Verses 1 and 2. The oracle which Habakkuk the prophet saw. How long, O Lord, will I call for help and you will not hear? I cry out to you violence, yet you do not save. Here, I mean, it's just a, a very honest and raw thing. Habakkuk is coming before God, and he's asking that question, God, are, are you hearing my prayers? Are you hearing my cries? He felt as if what he was asking or what he was crying out to God or, or the intentions, the prayer, the heartfelt prayers of his heart were falling on, on deaf ears. And he asked that question, is God even listening? And again, that's, that's a question maybe we've, we've pondered in, in our mind. Maybe we've never even dared to, to speak it out loud. But I, I think we've probably all felt like that, that there were times that we were, we were praying to God and we felt like our prayers didn't even go any higher than the ceiling. And it was just like nothing was happening. There was just inactivity. And this is where Habakkuk is. And, and he... And he, and he he says, how long, O oh Lord? Well, I call out for help. And he felt like God wasn't, wasn't helping. To me, here's the difference between perception and reality. And I think that's important for us as, as Christians. Because we walk around thinking this, okay, this is the perception of the Christian life. And somehow i got to fit into that mold. But the reality of my life doesn't match up with that. So what Satan does with that is he, and he, says, he takes it and says, there's something wrong with you. If you question God, there's something wrong with you. you. If you don't understand what God is doing, there's something wrong with you. That's what Satan is telling us. But yet, why does God give us this? Because this is, this is our experience. The difference between perception and reality. Perception says we should never question God. Right? That's what perception says. As, as a Christian, I should just have enough faith to just accept everything and, and just move on. Perception says I should never question God. But reality is, we all do at times. Habakkuk, he is questioning God. Moses, he questioned God. God said, I'm going to use you. He said, well, I can't use me. I, what, what are you talking about? Job. Question God. God, why are, why are these things happening? David questioned God. Look with me in Psalm chapter 13. Verses 1 and 2. I'm going to give you a little background. Because it's important to understand context of, of, of what is being said. In David's life right now, he is a fugitive, if you will. Saul was still the, the, the recognized king of Israel, but not by God. God had already told David, David, you, you, are, you are my chosen king. But yet Saul was still, he was still occupying that place of authority. So Saul understood that, and he saw David as a threat. So he began pursuing David, trying to kill him. And this is the time that David, he was living in caves. Just, he was running for his life. Here is a man. that He was a young boy at the time. God sends a prophet to his house and says, you are God's choice for king. Now he spends the next several years of his life running and hiding. You think he had some questions for God? 
Absolutely he had some questions for God. It was like God had told him, this is, this is what I want to do in your life, and yet that wasn't what was happening. And this is what, what David writes. Psalm 13, verses 1 and 2. He says, how long? Sounds very familiar, just like Habakkuk. How long, O Lord? Will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart all the day? How long will my enemy be exalted over me? David questions God, just like Habakkuk, and he says, How long, Lord? How, how, how long is... How long will you forget me? Had God forgotten David? No. In his heart of hearts, did David really think that God had forgotten him? No. The reality of his life, what he was feeling was just that. Have you ever gone through something in your life? You felt like everyone abandoned you, even God. That's how David was feeling. So we've all been in those places where we feel like God doesn't hear and God doesn't respond. But the truth is, and this is where it's, it's important that, that we separate truth from emotion. What David was crying out here was it, it was it was emotionally based. Doesn't mean his feelings were insignificant or his feelings weren't real. They were. But we always have to understand truth. And we can have those times of emotions. We we can cry out and we can ask those questions. Is God listening? But it always it has to lead us to the truth that even though it doesn't feel like it, God is absolutely listening. Look in Exodus chapter 3, verse 7. Exodus chapter 3, verse 7. The Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt and have given heed to their cry because of their taskmasters. For I am aware of their sufferings. God says, you know what, I, I know what my people Israel are, are going through and, and slavery in Egypt. And, and I hear their cries. I am aware of their afflictions. You know how long it was before God did something about this? Over 400 years. Over 400 years, God heard. You can imagine that the people were wondering, we've been in slavery for, for over 400 years. That what, does God hear? Is, is God even listening? And God says, yes, I, I, I do hear. I am aware. 1 John chapter 5. It's a good verse for us to know and, and, and understand, especially in those times when we're, we're going through those, those trials in, in life and we feel like God is not, doesn't hear us and, and we wonder, you know, are my prayers even working? Is, is, you know, should I even bother anymore? Because there seems to be this inactivity in what I'm asking. 1 John chapter 5, verse 14. This is the confidence which we have before Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. That's the confidence that we have as Christians, that when we come before our Heavenly Father, and whatever we ask according to His will, He hears hears us. That, that becomes kind of the essence between that, that, behind that scripture where Jesus says, ask and it shall be given. So it literally means keep on asking and then it shall be given. Keep on knocking and it shall be 
open. Keep on seeking and you shall find. In other words, the idea is there is that we ask until we ask according to the will of God. We keep on seeking until we seek according to the will of God. We keep on knocking until we knock according to the will of God. But we have that promise that God hears. Even when we look around and the rest of our life, it doesn't seem like it. It may not feel like it. God knows and God hears. Second question. That we're going to ask this morning. Not only is, is God listening, but is God concerned? Verses 3 and 4. The prophet continues here. He says, Why do you make me see iniquity and cause me to look on wickedness? Yes, destruction and violence are before me. Strife exists and contention arises. Therefore the law is ignored and justice is never upheld. For the wicked surround the righteous. Therefore justice comes out perverted. Now let me describe to you what, what is happening in the, in the day and life of, of Judah here. Um, Habakkuk was a contemporary of, of Nahum and Zephaniah and Jeremiah as well. It was just before the, the exile of the southern tribe of Judah to, to Babylon. And he was looking around and what he sees among his own countrymen, those who are in this covenant relationship with God, all he sees is wickedness and unfaithfulness. They, they were worshiping idols. They, you know, the, the law of God was not being upheld. And Habakkuk asks, again, that question. He says, God, are you, are you concerned about what's going on among your own people? Since Habakkuk looked around and he saw nothing but wickedness and unfaithfulness, his expectation was God would do something. Why was his expectation that, that God would do something? Because that's what God said in his word. He says, you know what, if you, are, if you are faithful to this covenant, this is how I'm going to bless you. If you are unfaithful to this covenant, then these are, are the curses that are going to come upon you. This is the judgment that is going to come upon you. And he's, Habakkuk's looking around, he's seeing sin and sin and sin. He's like, where's the judgment of God? God, are you even concerned that your people are unfaithful? Are you even concerned that your your law is, is being ignored. That your word is not being upheld. Sometimes what we see doesn't match what we know. In other words, what, what he knew about God, he knew that God was a just God. And he knew that, that God would, would come and, and judge. But that wasn't what he was seeing. There was a disconnect between what he knew and what he saw. And the only difference between those two things is time. Because God doesn't always give us the timetable. He just says consequence, or actions and consequences. If you do this, then this is going to happen. And that's what Habakkuk looked around and, and he was wondering out loud. And you know what, I, I, I know Christians that they struggle with that. So, you know, if, if there are false teachers out there, who are on TV each and every week and the gospel that, that they are preaching is, is, is not the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. It, it is a gospel contrary that, that Paul says if anyone, whether it be an angel from God, if they are to preach a gospel contrary to what we've received, he is to be accursed. You ever look around and say, where's the accursing God? These people are getting rich. These people are getting famous. These people are having an influence. You ever wander around and say, God, are you concerned about that? We see the sin that exists among us. People ask that question, does God care? Does He care about what's, what's going on? Again, sometimes what we see doesn't match what we know. But I said the difference is, is time. Look with me in 2 Peter chapter 3. Verse 9. The Lord is not slow about His promise, as some count slowness, 
but is patient towards you, not wishing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. We, we have to understand and remember the heart of God. The heart of God is, is he, His desire is for grace. His desire is for mercy. His desire is that given enough time, His people will come to repentance. So when we cry out and say, God, we want you to judge right now, Well, aren't we thankful that God didn't exercise that in our own lives? We want God to judge other people's sin, but aren't we thankful that the first time we sinned, God didn't judge us for eternity? Absolutely we are. So the same patience that God showed us, God is also showing others as well. Look at Exodus chapter 3 again. Because remember, God says, I, I heard... I hear the affliction of, of, or I hear the cries of my people. I, I know their afflictions. And remember, I said that went on for over 400 years. Exodus 3, verse 8. Not only does God see and, and hear, but he says in verse 8, So I have come down to deliver them from the power of the Egyptians and to bring them up from that land to a good and spacious land, to a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanite and the Hittite and the Amorite and the Perizzite and the Hivite and the Jebusite. Not only did God hear, but God was concerned and God was active. And now God was going to move because it was according to His time. Habakkuk asked that question. Verse 4 again, he says, Therefore the law is ignored, and justice is never upheld. You know what, essentially what he's saying is, he says, God, it's, it's, your, it's your word. It, it's your law that's not being upheld. It's your reputation that's at stake here, God. Don't you care about your own name? And the answer is, absolutely, God cares. Look with me in Ezekiel chapter 36. Verses 22 and 23. The Lord speaking here. He says, Therefore say to the house of Israel, Thus says the Lord God, It is not for your sake, O house of Israel, that I am about to act, but for my holy name, which you have profaned among the nations where you went, I will vindicate the holiness of my great name, which was profaned among the nations, which you have profaned in their midst. Then the nations will know that I am the Lord, declares the Lord God, when I prove myself holy among you in their sight. So we have to understand and know that the patience of God doesn't mean that God is unconcerned about what's going on. Here, God was patient with, with Israel. God was patient with Judah. He, he had sent prophet after prophet, asking him to repent, telling him of, of the coming judgment. But just because he was showing patience didn't mean he wasn't concerned and did not mean that he would not act. Because God says, I am going to act. And when I act, it's not for your sake, but it is for my holy name's sake that God was about to move. Habakkuk's going to find out that very same thing. We ask those questions, is God listening? And we, we know that the truth is that God is listening just because He doesn't move according to our timetable or according to our plans. God does hear us. Maybe we ask those questions, God, are you concerned? Do you, do you even care what's going on? Do you recognize what's going on? God says, I do. And if I'm not acting in a, in a manner that you wish, it's because I'm, I'm being patient. But don't get my patience wrong. God's patience doesn't mean his lack of judgment. Because God will judge. Third question we need to ask ourselves. 
And this question comes back to us. Can we even fathom? Pick it up in verse 5 in Habakkuk. And this is the Lord begins to speak. You'll notice it is in a new paragraph in quotation marks here. So the Lord responds here to the prophet. He says, look among the nations, observe, be astonished, and wonder, because I am doing something in your days you would not believe if you were told. For behold, I am raising up the Chaldeans. The Chaldeans was just an, another name for, for the Babylonians. That fierce and impetuous people who march throughout the earth to seize dwelling places which are not theirs. They are dreaded and feared. Their justice and authority originate with themselves. Their horses are swifter than leopards and keener than wolves in the evening. Their horsemen come galloping. Their horsemen come from afar. They fly like an eagle swooping down to devour. All of them come for violence. Their horde of faces move forward. They collect captives like sand. They mock at kings and rulers are a laughing matter to them. They laugh at every fortress and heap up rubble to capture it. Then they will sweep through like the wind and pass on. But they will be held guilty. They whose strength is their God. Even when we don't see it, or even when we don't understand it, God is always doing something. Here he responds to the prophet and he says, you know, you need to look. You need to observe, kind of take the temperature of what is going on around you. Ba Babylon was this mighty empire and they were capturing all the nations around Israel. He says, take a look. See what is going. He says, What's about to happen? You wouldn't believe it if you were told. And then he goes on to describe the fierceness of the armies that, that would swoop in. And we'll, we'll cover that more later. But I, I really just want to focus there on, on verse 5. In the midst of Habakkuk's questions, God, are you listening? God, do you even care? God doesn't condone him. God doesn't ridicule him. God doesn't say, I, I can't believe that, that you're even asking these things. You know what I've come to realize is that God can handle our questions. He's, he's not scared of our questions. But when we question God, be ready to accept his answer. And his answer to Habakkuk was, you know what? I am listening. I do care. And what I'm about to do, you absolutely cannot understand it. And that is the truth of the matter. We feel like God is inactive because what God is doing, we often can't perceive. Or what God is doing.